Hello, 8th graders. The first topic in this new unit is all about acceleration. We're going to be learning about what it is and how to look at it on a graph and, of course, how to calculate it. In just a minute, you're going to see the different types of acceleration, but I ultimately want to argue that the brake pedal and the gas pedal in your car are both different types of accelerators, along with the steering wheel as well. The objectives for today, number one, you're going to be able to describe them, the three types of acceleration, calculate for them, and be able to describe some acceleration using a table and graph. So the first thing that we need to do is go and take a few notes on your pack. Acceleration is a measure of how quickly some velocity changes. So the one that you're probably most familiar with is something starting out slow or at rest and then going faster and faster and faster. Usually when we say the word accelerate, that's the one we're talking about. But there's also negative acceleration, which would be another way of saying slowing down. So let's say you're going really fast, but then you go slower and slower and slower. That's a type of acceleration. We would usually call it deceleration, but technically that would be negative acceleration. And then the one that sometimes people forget about. Remember, velocity has a direction. So if the definition for acceleration is that it's when velocity changes, suppose you're going this direction and you start turning to the left, you're changing your velocity vector. You're changing which way it points. So that's a type of acceleration too. You would technically be accelerating to the left or to the right. Your speed may be the exact same, but because your velocity direction is changing, that's a type of acceleration. So for a visual of these three types, let's say that you've got a car that's just sitting still, and as you go on in time, its velocity is getting faster and faster, and therefore it's covering more ground, and this is speeding up or positive acceleration. Then there's also slowing down, which is where you're starting at a velocity that isn't zero, you're moving, and then that velocity is going to shrink and shrink and shrink, and you're just taking away from the velocity every second. And then the last one is where you're changing direction. Notice that in this picture, the speed is the same, but the direction of the velocity arrow keeps changing as the time goes on. All three of these are different forms of acceleration. The first one, you're adding to the velocity. The second one, you're taking away from the velocity. And the third one, you're changing the direction of the velocity. One important thing to note with this is that acceleration is a vector. So remember way back to when we learned about vectors, vectors are things that have a direction and an, and an amount. So you can accelerate or decelerate, and you can do it in any direction. In this class, because we're only going to deal with things on a number line, we really only need to worry about plus or minus. We're not going to deal with cars or objects that are going to be turning too much. But back and forth on a number line, we can use positive or negative acceleration. So in the case of positive acceleration, again, that's the car that's going faster and faster in one direction. And then all the other types of questions that have negative acceleration, that's where things are going to be slowing down. These are really the only two types of questions that we're going to have to calculate for. But you should also know that changing direction is technically a type of acceleration. Now let's get into the actual equation. So the equation can look a little scary at first because it has these Greek letters, they're triangles, but it's the Greek letter delta. So delta is a Greek word for change. So if you look at it this way, acceleration is how much did your velocity change divided by how much did your time change. That's all that these triangles mean is how much did those things change. So if we rewrite this equation, because if the triangle is throwing you off a little bit especially, we can say that the same equation can be written this way. Acceleration is your final velocity minus this I stands for initial or starting velocity. That'll tell you how much your velocity changed. This is a really handy equation in place of this one on the left because sometimes you're going to need to solve for one of these two velocities. Like the question might be giving you everything except for one and be like, how fast was this car going at the beginning of the story or at the end? And it'll tell you all the other stuff. So this equation is just a blown out version of this one, and it can be more useful. So on your paper, let's label a few things. We've got final velocity and initial or starting velocity. The units that we're going to use for these things are meters per second for velocity and seconds in most cases for time. Now acceleration has a very strange unit. We would say meters per second per second. It has two S's in there. And you can also write it like this. Sometimes you'll see it as meters per second squared. Well, that unit can be really confusing because it's got seconds in there twice. I had a teacher once that helped me to think of it this way. 
If acceleration is how much your velocity changed every single second, you can think of it as how much did my meters per second change every second. Think of that last second as something different than the top meters per second. That helped me to get my head around it, maybe to help you too. We also have one of these handy triangles for this equation. If you're being asked to solve for the change in velocity, you can cover that and do acceleration times time because they're side by side. Or if you're covering t, you're trying to solve for t, that would be change in velocity divided by acceleration. So the triangle can help us to solve for all three parts. Let's get into some calculation examples. Let's go back to that first car that had a positive acceleration. So we have this car that's every second increasing how fast that it's going. Its velocity is getting greater and greater every second. And our job is, of course, to calculate the acceleration. We're always going to start with the equation. So acceleration is change in velocity, or velocity final minus initial, divided by time. Then we're going to substitute, plug in the things that we know. So in this picture, we know that its final velocity at the end of the picture was 15, and it started at rest in this first part of the picture. And if we count, it took one, two, three seconds for this whole thing to take place. Now it's just some basic uh, math in the calculator. 15 minus 0, of course, is 15, divided by 3, and we get our acceleration at 5 meters per second every single second. In other words, we added 5 to the velocity every second. That's what our acceleration is telling us. Well, how about we, we start with something that has some non-zero velocities. So we have a car that's traveling at 8 meters per second before it speeds up to 64. So this wasn't a car at rest at the beginning. We've got some non-zero numbers. And they're telling us that the acceleration took 8 seconds, and we're supposed to calculate. Well, the math is the exact same. We're going to start with the same exact equation, plug in the things that we know. So in this example, they said that it got up to 64, so that was the velocity final. And it started at the beginning of the story at 8, and it took 8 seconds. So we're going to do 64 minus 8 divided by 8, and that is going to give us 7 meters per second per second. In other words, this car was adding 7 to its velocity every single second as it sped up. Now let's do one for a car that's slowing down. So in this situation, we've got a car that's starting at 30, and its velocity is being subtracted each time. So we're going to have an acceleration that is negative. Every second, we're taking away from the velocity. The good news is that the math is the exact same. It's just that we should expect a negative number when we're done. That'll tell us if we've done things right. Like always, we're going to start with our equation and then substitute in the things that we know. So the final velocity in this case was 19.5, and the starting velocity was 30. If you get into the bad habit of just putting the big number and the little number in that order, you're not going to probably get right answers half the time. Be very careful that you're thinking about, what was the velocity at the end? And I know it feels a little confusing. That's the first number that we write down, minus the starting velocity divided by time. Then again, we just go to our calculators. 19.5 minus 30 is going to give us a negative number. Then we divide that by 3. When we simplify, we get negative 10.5 over 3. And our acceleration is a negative 3.5 meters per second per second. In other words, we were taking away 3.5 from the velocity every single second of this story. Now let's try the most challenging type of question that we're going to do in this class. In this question, our job is going to be to figure out the final or starting velocity. They're giving us everything else. So they're telling us a bike rider was going 1.5 meters per second when they reached the top of a hill. Then they accelerated at 0.75, and they did that for 4 seconds. So as long as we're starting with our equation, we should be okay. They're giving us the acceleration, and they're giving us the initial velocity, what they started with at the top of the hill. They also gave us the time. Our job is to solve for velocity final. In other words, how fast were they going at the bottom? So we're going to substitute in the numbers that we know. We're going to put our 0.75 for the acceleration. We don't know velocity final, so I'm going to just leave that as a VF, minus our initial velocity, 1.5, all that over 4. Now we just have some algebra. If you're a little rusty with the algebra here, first thing we need to do is get this number off the bottom. Since all this stuff on the top is divided by 4, we want to multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of this 4 on the bottom. When we do that, we simplify our expression. We've got 3 equals velocity final minus 1.5. Well, if we have minus 1.5, that means we're going to need to add 1.5 to both sides to get this thing out of there. And when we do, 
we're going to get our velocity final to be four and a half meters per second. In other words, when this person was done at the bottom of the hill after all that accelerating, they were going four and a half meters per second. Now it's your turn to practice. These practice problems are only found on your screen in this video, so you're going to need to pause this video in order to read through the questions and put them into your paper. When you're ready to check your answers, there's a separate video in Google Classroom. Please remember that these practice questions are here for you to be able to work out any misunderstandings that you might have. I'm trusting you to come and find me if you're having any problems and to check your answers, not just so that you can make sure that you have the right thing written on your paper, but so that you can see if you've understood what's going on in these questions. Your job as a student is to seek out my help if any of that is giving you a hard time. This video is not over. When you are done with these practice problems, I will give you the next steps once you start again. If you're still watching, you've tried these practice problems, you've checked your answers, and you're ready to move on. We've done the first two objectives in this video, describing the three types of acceleration and calculating for them. The last piece is looking at a table and graph to think about acceleration. So let's say that we have this table where we have some object that's going at a constant velocity. Every second that goes past, the object is staying going 25 meters per second. It's just cruising along at 25. I want you to think about what these numbers that are covered right now should look like. If you need to pause the video to imagine what they're going to be, I want you to do that. Think about what they should be like. Well, if this object is moving, it's going 25 meters per second, its displacement should be going up, but it should be going up at a steady rate because it's going 25 meters every single second. So we should be adding 25 every time. But because the velocity isn't changing, our acceleration isn't doing anything. We're not accelerating. We're just going at a constant velocity. So for our acceleration, nothing. We're not changing how fast we're going. We're staying at 25. And our displacement keeps growing by 25 each time. Now let's think about this car that's slowing down. In this case, we have negative acceleration. So pause this video and try to imagine what these numbers should look like. If you're still watching, you've put some thought into these numbers. Well, our velocity this time is shrinking, but we're still moving by the end. We haven't stopped yet. That means that our displacement should keep increasing each time, but the amount that it increases each second will be a smaller amount. We're going to add on a displacement a little bit tinier each time. Now our acceleration is how much our velocity changed. This number is shrinking, so we should expect a negative acceleration. And here's in fact what we have. The car is decelerating or slowing down at negative 3.5, and our displacement is gradually getting smaller and smaller each second that time goes on. Now the last one for speeding up. Pause this video and think about how these numbers should look. All right, so we've got a velocity that's getting greater and greater. That must mean we have a positive acceleration. And our displacement should be going up because we're moving, but it should be going up at a greater quantity each time we move along in time. So for this one, we have a positive 3.5, and our displacement was getting bigger each second. On your paper, it is really important to be able to describe the difference between these three words. In fact, I would argue that if you can successfully describe how these three words are related to each other, like what do they have to do with one another, and how are they different, then you've got this ELR down. And of course, that's what we want. So pause this video and fill in on your paper the difference or the relationship between these things. Here's how I wrote it. Displacement is how far away from the start you are. We did that in our last unit. We measure it in meters. Sometimes a unit can help us think about this too. So this is how far away we've gone. Velocity is how much displacement you have per second. That's like how fast you're going. How much are you changing your meters every single second? Acceleration is how much are you changing your velocity every single second. So take a look at these units. Display, if we work backwards, acceleration tells us how much velocity changes every second. Dis and velocity tells us how much displacement changes every single second. They build on each other, and you can see it in the units as you look from left to right. Now we're going to take a look at what these tables look like on a graph. These tables look different, but they're actually the same ones we just looked at a second ago. I just kept going with the data, but they're the same tables. I want you to think about what the displacement line will look like, the velocity line, 
and the acceleration line. There will be three colors of lines on these graphs as I reveal them. I want you to also sketch them into your notes. If you want to use three different colors, I strongly recommend that. At least be sure to label the three as you go. Let's look at the constant velocity one first. Our displacement is going up and up and up by a steady number, so we should see a gradually increasing line. The velocity stays at 30 the whole time, so we should expect a flat line because it's staying at one number. Same with acceleration. And this is what that graph looks like. Notice the yellow one at the bottom is our acceleration, just staying at zero the whole time. For this one, the important things to notice are that the displacement slopes up on a constant velocity graph. The velocity and the acceleration are both flat. More importantly, the acceleration is flat at zero. These are the key traits of a graph that's doing constant velocity. Now let's go on to slowing down. Before I reveal this one, I want you to pause it and be thinking about what should this graph be looking like. All right, let's think this through. For acceleration, we're going to have this constant number at negative 3.5, so we should see another flat line at negative 3.5. Our velocity is gradually getting smaller as time goes on, so we should be seeing a curve in that one that's gradually shrinking as time goes on. For our displacement, it's still going up, but it goes up by less each time. So it's going to jump up the most at the beginning, and then a little bit less the next one, and a little bit less the next. So we should also see a curve, but a curve going up. So this is what that graph is going to look like. The key characteristics of this one is that our displacement is curved down. That's going to be our blue line. Our acceleration is flat, and our velocity slopes down. It's decreasing by a constant amount each time. Now, just like before, I want you to think about the speeding up graph. Be thinking about what it should look like before you move on. All right, so we've got constant acceleration adding 3.5, so that one's going to be flat. For velocity, we're synchronously adding 3.5 each time, so we should see a nice steady slope. And our displacement this time goes up a little bit, then it goes up a little bit more and more and more and more, and it keeps growing the amount that it goes up, so we should see a curve there. So the key characteristics here is that displacement curves up, that's our blue line, that's how far we've gone. Our velocity has a slope to it, and our acceleration again is flat. The two things that you're going to be turning in for this lesson, one is a Google form with some practice questions about the calculations. The second thing is this link. It's going to take you to an interactive that looks like my screen, where you're going to try to compare graphs. Let me show you how it works. When you get here, it's going to ask you for a name. Just leave it as guest and then click start. Your next task is to choose a level. I would like you to start with the apprentice levels, just four questions. But of course, if you're feeling like these are far too easy for you, feel free to move up the difficulty level. Once you begin, it's going to show you two different graphs. The first one is, it says position, but you can think of it as displacement versus time. So think of it like this. This object is got a big jump in its position in the first second, and the amount that its displacement is going up shrinks each time. So it's not going very far in a, in a set amount of time by the very end of this graph. In other words, this object must be slowing down. So we need to choose something on the right that shows slowing down. Over here, it's showing that we're adding to the velocity every second. This would be speeding up. So if we click on this one, we can change it to be a different type of graph. This is showing that we're adding more and more to the velocity each time. This is speeding up also. We don't want that. This one shows taking away from the velocity over time. We can check to make sure that these two graphs go together, and it'll tell us how we've done. It's now your turn to go and try the other questions. When you are finished, I want you to take a screenshot of your final score to attach to this lesson.